What's up guys? Justin here with the RealtimeEssentials.com back with another Unity asset tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out an asset designed to help you create splines or curves inside of Unity as well as how to make objects follow those curves other things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright so curvy splines is a tool contained inside of the Unity Asset Store. So you can find that by following the link in the notes down below. I will link to this. Um, but basically it's a tool designed to help you create different splines and curves. And then um, with those splines and curves, you can make it do different things, right? You can make objects follow along paths or other interesting things like that. Um, I will note that right now, this is currently 50% off as a part of the Unity Asset Store sale. Um, so if you are interested in checking it out, this is a great time to do that. If you don't catch this during the sale, this is still a great tool. So the link will be there in the notes down below either way. So it's a simple tool that you bring into Unity. And so um, first off, so there's a number of different resources linked to on this page. So for example, they've got a documentation section that's got a lot of information about the way everything works. They've also got an extensive tutorial library on YouTube with multiple different tutorials showing you how to do different things. So um, there's a lot of information here that allows you to kind of get up and running um, with this tool. They've also got this really awesome WebGL demo, which is one of the better demos I have seen for the functionality of something. Thing. And basically what it is, is it's just a number of different examples um, that were built in Unity showing you the different functions that this has incorporated. So things like looking at the physics interaction and how that might work, or things like being able to apply custom data to a spline, um, other things like that. So I, I would recommend that you go through all of these and you take a look at what they can do. This is a really great overview of the tools or the things that you can do with this particular asset. So really liking this page. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at it inside of Unity. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure that you enable it using the package manager and you just wanna find curvy splines and you just wanna import that. So you wanna download that and import it into your project. And so when you download it and import it into your project, you're gonna get these options over here on the left-hand side of the screen. And these are going to allow you to start creating different spline objects. Um, alternatively, you can just right click in here and under the curvy option, it's gonna give you things like controllers and splines. So you can also add those this way, or you could also add an empty and then apply the script to it. So as a general rule, you're probably going to use this tool the most, or maybe just right clicking and adding an object this way. But let's start off by creating a spline. So we just wanna add a spline by clicking on the draw spline button. So when you do that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna start by giving you an option for which plane you want this to be on. In this case, we want this to be on the XZ plane because we want it to be flat. So what we're gonna do is just click right here and then notice how it says here, hold control to add control points. So if you hold the control key on your, um, on your keyboard and then click, notice how that's gonna add a point. And so if you left click again, that's gonna add another point, another point, and another point. And so we're gonna make sure the use XZ plane is checked and then we're just gonna hold the control key and we're just going to click. Well, notice how when we click, what that's gonna do is that's gonna start adding control points for a spline into our scene. And so notice what this is doing is this is basically adding control points in here, and then it's also generating a curve based on those control points. So, and notice how each one of these control points is adjustable. So you can just click on it and then use the gizmo in order to move those around. One other thing is you can also add additional control points in here. So let's say I wanted to add a control point between this and this. Well, what we would do is we would just hold the control key with this one selected and then click. Well, notice how that's gonna add a control point in here. So you can add these points really easily using this tool. So within these curvy spline objects, if you select the overall parent, which is gonna be the whole thing in here, notice how there's options inside of the script on the right-hand side for the different kinds of like interpolation that this is going to use. So notice how, for example, this, 
um, if you set it to the cap mole, is going to give you a curve. But if we were to set it to linear, it's just going to give us a number of straight lines between the different control points. So you can use the kind of interpolation in here to set the kind of curve that's created. So there's an option in here to restrict this to 2D. There's also an option in here for closed. And so what closed is going to do is that's actually going to close this in. So if I was to move this over and then for my overall spline, Right here, if I was to click on the button for closed, what that's going to do is that's going to close this in so that this is an enclosed circular shape that makes a complete path. There's also some more advanced settings, which I don't want to get too far into right now, but note that you can use the cache density to set the uh, basically the number of points that are being figured out between the different control points in here. So obviously more points or more density is going to give you more information in here for this to work with, but it's also more calculations that this has to do. And so I do want to point out, so first off, there's an options button right here with a preferences. And so the preferences is going to allow you to adjust the default spline type. It's going to allow you to adjust the spline color, all of that different stuff, as well as having um, some keyboard shortcuts that are in here that you can use when you're working with the tool. So in addition, to the preferences, there's also there's also links to the manual, um, there's links to their website, other things like that. And then there's also an about page or an about um, window, which is basically gonna give you links to all of those different things. So if you are looking for support or anything like this, is that this is gonna be a great place for you to go. And so in addition to being able to draw splines like this, you can also use the create function to create shapes. So if we were to click in here, for example, and let's say we wanted to create a circle, so like this, notice what that's gonna do is that's going to generate a circle for us. And we're gonna adjust the plane like this, maybe move it out of the way. Um, but you can adjust the count as well as the radius. So the count is going to set how many control points you have in here. So more control points gives you more control, obviously. Um, radius does exactly what it sounds like. So there's a couple different shape types. So there's either um, two dimensional, so you can do like rounded rectangles or stars, for example. And we're just gonna readjust this, adjust our height, and you can adjust the roundness right here. So notice how that's gonna round off your edges. Um, there's also things like the star in here. And you can adjust the inner and outer radius here, as well as if that's gonna be rounded off. Um, and then there's also a 3D spiral shape in here that you can use, where you can adjust number of control points, as well as number of circles, radius, and then a couple other factors as well. So there's a few other tools that show up in your workspace right here. So things like allowing you to set the overall pivot point or pivot location of the entire object. So notice how you can select these different locations and that's gonna set where the overall pivot point is going to be, like this. So that's where your pivot point's gonna be when you adjust the entire object's location. So there's also a flip option, which is gonna allow you to flip the direction that this is going, um, as well as, we're not gonna worry about normalize right now, but there's some tools down below for some interesting things. Like for example, um, probably the biggest one for me is the spline to mesh. So you could actually use this to create a mesh in here, just like this. Uh, one thing to note about this is I think I need to upgrade the materials to universal render pipeline materials. So I'm just gonna click on the upgrade button, click on proceed. There we go. Now our material is actually gonna show up in here properly. But you can see how you can use this in order to do things like lofting. So you could use this to create game objects using your splines, just like this. So you can see how that basically created a surface using this spline. So maybe this particular shape might not be the ideal shape, but there's a lot of interesting applications that could be found with that. All right, so there's a concept I wanna get into very high level which is the concept of generators. So what a generator is, is basically a tool that you add in here that generates um, geometry inside of your scene or generates objects inside of your scenes using the path. So let's say that we wanted to add um, a very simple path that creates like a tube along the path. Well, what we would do is we would just right click in here and under curvy, Instead of adding the spline, we're gonna add a generator. And so when we add a generator, which we're just gonna call tube for right now. So when we add a generator, notice how that adds a little script function right here with a graph inside of it. 
And so if you click on the graph, what that's gonna do is that's gonna open up a graph on your page here where you're gonna be able to basically add different node-based objects. And so um, what we wanna do, so let's right click in here and let's just add a template. And in this case, we're gonna add a template for shape extrusion. So when we add a template for shape extrusion, notice how that adds a few different nodes in here that we can use um, in order to adjust things like, we can adjust things like the way that this looks, for example. And so again, I don't wanna to get too far into this, but notice what this is doing is this is basically taking an input spline path and it's creating an extrusion over here. So um, you've got your path and you've got your shape. So your shape is something that you can select either from this dropdown. So like for example, if I was to select the pie option, notice how this is gonna use a pie shape as the extrusion. If you were to select something else like the star, for example, then that's gonna have a star extrusion along your path. So um, notice how over here, there's an input spline path and an input spline shape. So for the path, we can open this up and if you look at the path, notice how this is basically like any other spline path um, that we've talked about before, right? So you can select this, move it around and notice how that shape is being extruded along here, um, however you change that. So if we were to click in here and uh, click the, or if we were to hold the control key and click, notice how we can add control points in here. And when we add control points, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us more control over our shape. So if you were to add a control point over here, for example, notice how this is basically going to give us an extra control point in here, but this shape is gonna to continue to get extruded along this path. And so we've currently got this set on the star, but notice how there's also an option here for freeform. And so when we click on the option for freeform, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to adjust the input spline shape right here. So notice how this is basically just taking um, another spline and extruding it along this path. So let's say we were to adjust this out like this. Notice how when we adjust it, the shape that's getting extruded along our path is getting adjusted as well. And so this is really powerful because it gives us the ability to create whatever shape we want and then extrude it along a path. And notice how there are other options in here that you can adjust. So, so things like the length along the paths, so you can set this so it does or so it may or may not actually follow all the way along the path. You can also adjust the resolution, which is gonna adjust how many points are in the shape that's created, um, as well as some other things in here as well, which we're not gonna mess around with too much for right now. But you can also set the way that this uh, crosses. You can adjust the scale of your objects. So lots of different things you can adjust in here. You can see what this is doing is this is taking the volume that it's extruding, extruding it to a volume mesh, which is then going out to a create mesh function. The create mesh function is basically, this is where you set all of the different settings of the mesh that's being created in here. So you can set this so that it'll be a collider, other things like that. And so there's a great example of how this works. If you go into the curvy examples, so under uh, plugins, curvy examples, under scenes, there's a scene in here for a train. And so if we look at the train um, example, this is basically using a generator in order to create your track. So if we were to pick one of these control points, like this one, notice how the entire track is moving along with this control point. So it's adjusting this dynamically because it's creating this object using a generator. So, and so you can access that generator by going up to the rail track generator right here. And you can actually look at the setup that they've got created in here um, for creating that uh, for creating that object. So you can see how it's basically extruding your rail track. Um, it's also got some objects that are getting repeated along this path. We can get into this um, more in the future if that's something that you're interested in. So leave a comment down below and let me know. But notice how this is going to adjust dynamically. And then one last thing that I didn't touch before, which I did wanna talk about just for a second, is if you select these control points on your paths like this. So there's an option here for auto handles, right? And so auto handles means this is basically going to automatically control the orientation of your points inside of your scene like this. Well, if you uncheck the box for auto handles, notice what this does is this gives you two handles in here that you can use in order to control the way that the different points in the curve interact. So notice how I can move these handles 
like this in order to adjust the way that this curve goes through this control point. So this gives you a lot of fine control over what you can create using this tool. All right, so I will link to this tool in the notes down below. So let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in some more tutorials using this tool. Um, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.